Good, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and welcome to, this, to St. Andrews on this glorious Palm Sunday. And you should all have a um, cross, palm leaf cross. If you do not have one, Jody has some in the back. Um, and we want to thank Herman for the palms that makes it look so festive in here. Thank you, Herman, for doing that. A couple of announcements in the bulletin. Um, Thursday is our Monday Thursday service. We're going to have a light supper at 6.15 and a service in here at 7. And then on Good Friday, the church will be open from noon to 1 p.m. for anybody that wants to come in and just have a quiet time of prayer. Kathy will be playing softly in the background and um, you guys are going to have guides? Prayer guides. Yes. Yes. And there will be <laughs> there will be prayer guides available if you need some inspiration. And then on Easter Sunday, we are not doing the lilies this year, but we're asking everybody that comes to please bring some flowers to help us decorate the sanctuary. They can be cut flowers from your garden in a vase. And Michelle says there's lots of vases in the um, what was the nursery. What's in the nursery? So if you need a vase or a vase to put your flowers in, um, you can get them from Michelle. And um, flowering plants, a cut flower arrangement, however you um, want to bring some flowers. And please have them here by 1010 so that we can put them around the sanctuary. And before that, um, at 7 a.m., we're going to have our sunrise service out in the front. And then Michelle and Summer and um, all of their committee, Laura and I can't remember who else is on there, are going to do a, um, what? Cassie. Cassie. Oh, Cassie, sorry. Um, they're going to do a pancake breakfast for us, which should be nice and yummy. And then Easter service, of course, at 1030. Um, today, during the anthem, our choir is a little slim this morning, so we're asking all of you to join us during the singing of our anthem and it's the one that you know and are very familiar with so after um after where we usually sit we're just gonna everybody's just gonna stay standing and we're going to sing and your crosses during verse two we're going to wave our crosses in the air okay and does anyone else have any other announcements so Michelle is going to do a minute for mission for us. Good morning. Good morning. There are four uh, special offerings that we do through the year. And on Easter Sunday is one great hour of sharing. I believe there will be a, a packet in your, in that thing you get, yeah, the bulletin <laughs> next week. There's three programs in one great hour of sharing. One for hunger, one for uh, the poor and oppressed, and one for disaster relief. That is around the world. So please uh, give generously and join the Presbyterians worldwide uh, by sharing God's love with supporting these. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, my words are not coming easy today. Support these projects. Even giving a little, if everybody gives a little, then it turns into a lot. So thank you. Let us worship our God.
Good morning. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. Let Israel say, Let us stand and lift our voices to the Lord with our opening hymn, O oh, Glory, Lord, and Honor, page 88, verses 1 through 3 in the blue hymnal. Please remain standing as we affirm our faith together. As we begin our final week before Jesus' crucifixion, let us remember the great promise of God's unfailing love as found in Romans 8, 38 and 39. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. things a little different today. Everyone stay standing and sing along with the choir. Uh, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. It's on page 89 in your blue hymnal.
let's uh, greet our friends, but don't touch anybody. Please be seated. We hear your word read and interpreted. May it help us to engage in this final journey with you in this holy time. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our first reading of scripture comes from Psalm 181, 5 to 13 through 14. God. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because it lasts forever. In tight circumstances, I cried out to the Lord. The Lord answered me with wide open spaces. The Lord is for me. I won't be afraid. What can anyone do to me? The Lord is for me as my helper. I look in victory on those who hate me. It's far better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust any human. It's far better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust any human leader. I was pushed so hard I nearly died, but the Lord helped me. The Lord was my strength and protection. He was my saving help. Word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus gave two disciples a task, saying to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you, as soon as you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, it's the master, its master needs it, and he will send it right away. They went and found a colt tied to a gate outside of the, on the street, and they untied it. Some people standing around said to them, what are you doing untying that, the colt? They told them just what Jesus said, and they left them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes upon it, and he sat on it. Many people spread out their clothes on the road while others spread branches cut from the fields. Those in front of him and those following were shouting, Hosanna, blessed all, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. After he looked around at everything, because it was already late in the evening, he returned to Bethany with the twelve. The word of the Lord.
Pray with me. Oh Lord, speak to us what you would have us feel and do and say. Speak to our hearts and speak through me the words you would have me say. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen. I first want to give credit to Debbie Thomas in her article, Save Us, We Pray, on the scripture today. She really contributed to my thinking in a very helpful way. Helpful for me. I hope it's helpful for you. Um, at Passover, which is when Palm Sunday took place, during Passover, Jerusalem swelled from 50,000 people to approximately 200,000 people. It was a city that was teeming. And <clears throat> Marcus Board and John and John Crusan wrote a book called The Last Week, What the Gospels Really Teach About Jesus' Last Days in Jerusalem. And they give this account of two parades. The first one came in from the West, the West, and it was the Imperial Roman Parade to flaunt their power and give a warning to anyone who wanted, who was thinking about resisting them. And so there was with them, there was pilot rode with a cavalry of horses and foot soldiers and hel helmets, metal helmets and le leather armor and weapons and <coughs> banners and eagles, gold eagles on poles. And then there was also the glistening of the sun on the metal and the gold. And there was the sound of tromping feet and beating drums. Surely an impressive show of might and warning. Coming in from the east was a very different procession. And we celebrated, and I don't want to be tarred and feathered for saying this, but there was a contrast, okay? <laughs> there was a contrast. There was a ragtag group of common folks that gathered and sang praises. They sang and they spread cloaks in the way and waved palms in the air. And they sang, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And the one to whom they sang rode without a weapon on a colt which was a symbol of peace. And he was riding to his death. That is referred to as Jesus' triumphal entry. I'm not sure where we get the triumph in this. Well, I do have some ideas. But these two, these two parades, to me, are a paradox. The one from the West with all its might, and the one from the East, Jesus coming in peace. It's, it shows the contradictory elements involved in Palm Sunday and Holy Week. It shows where you and I live the ups and downs of life. Let me explain what I mean. When I was a child, our church did not celebrate Lent. We celebrated Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter. And that was it in terms of this whole time, season. And I love Palm Sunday. Not as much as Easter when I got to wear a new outfit. But, but I love Palm Sunday with all the singing and the processing down the aisles and the palms and all of this 
It was fun. It was fun. But as I grew older, a niggling question came to me. Why do we celebrate Palm Sunday when five days later Christ is crucified? Why do we do that? And that just kind of niggled at me for years. And I finally, finally as an adult, said, well, it was because Jesus Christ conquered death, and therefore we're singers of life and not singers of death. And that is very true. But this, this, this year, as I was preparing my sermon, I was thinking and I was saying, this doesn't get at it all. It's true, yes, that we're singers of life, but this doesn't say everything that needs to be said. It doesn't cut completely close to our lives where we are. And that I mean, and by that I mean it doesn't touch the ups and downs of life that we all face and are facing right now, right now. Oh, the ups of life are our family and friends and those that we are close to and the good times that we have. There, it's the enjoying God's new, good creation, which we can do even here as we look out and see the birds when they greet us at the windows. <laughs> That's part of it. It's also our faith and commitment to God and his comfort at times. And the fellowship that we feel when we gather here and the satisfaction we feel when we're able to help others, all of that are the ups of life. But they're also the downs, the downs of life, aren't there? And especially, to me, it feels like it's been in the last few years. There was first the, the COVID-19 with its isolation and death for many. There, was, there is the wars, Ukraine, Gaza, Palestine, Israel. There was the violence and divisions in our own country. And there are what we all have, has touched all of us, and that is sickness of either ourselves or our loved ones and the loss of loved ones. Those are the downs. As Debbie Thomas has written, we slide from hope to disappointment, from disappointment to hope, can go from praise to pain. Isn't that right? Doesn't that happen? Yeah, we can. Let me ask, who knows what Hosanna means? Anybody? You can't talk. <laughs> Hosanna means, and I always thought that was a praise word, but it means help us. It means save us. No, it doesn't mean us, excuse me. It means save now. Save now. Save now. Don't you feel that like that a lot? And this crowd that was coming, you know, I am sure that this crowd that waved their palms, they, they did not all understand what it was all about. Even the disciples didn't understand until later. They did not, and I'm sure they had a mixture of motives. Some of them were probably, the, probably also crying crucify five days later. Some of them, I'm not, you know, don't tar and feather me. I'm just telling you as I look at the Gospels. They had mixed motives and understanding, just like we have mixed motives and understandings as we come here. But the cry was, save now, not tomorrow. We put up with enough. Save us now. And Jesus, you can do it. You have healed the blind. You have made, made lame people walk. You have raised the dead. You can do it. Save us now. How can we hold it all together any longer? 
And there is a way. There is a way. Psalm 118 is often liturgically linked for Christians with Palm Sunday. And verse 1, Psalm 118.1 says, Thank the Lord for he is good for his faithful love endures forever. His faithful love endures forever. Now the word faithful love, it is chassid. You know, you get chassid in Hebrew. C-H-A-S-E-D is how it's transliterated into our alphabet. And the, the NRSV translates it steadfast love. The common English translates it faithful love. John Holbrook, who wrote an interesting article on this psalm, translates it God's unbreakable love connection. Unbreakable love connection. And that speaks to me. No matter what's going on, this is God's unbreakable love connection that we have with God. We have it with God. And he, he also says, God's unbreakable love connection is all we need to know. It's all we need to know. And that fact underlies all our dealings with God. Got it? That fact underlies, God's unbreakable love connection underlies all our dealings with God, even when Jesus Christ rides into Jerusalem to his terrible death and his victorious conquering of death. All we need to know is that we have an unbreakable love connection with God unbreakable and it underlies all of our dealings with God what I want to leave with you today in all of this is mainly three things the first thing is the things we go through in the up and ups and downs of life are only the Palm Sunday and Holy Week on steroids. <laughs> In other words, what we go through, as traumatic as it can be for us, is only a pale shadow of what Jesus Christ endured. And this one who endured, endured those things holds us and goes with us in an unbreakable love connection. And the second thing follows that, and that we can be certain of this unbreakable love connection in all of the ups and downs of life. And finally, finally, <laughs> what was it? Jesus Christ invites us to go with him through Palm Sunday this day and all of Holy Week. He goes with us and journeys with us through all the roads that we take in our lives. And he invites us to join him. And I want to read something from the Presbyterian pastor and also prolific writer, Frederick Beekner. They travel the road to Jerusalem together, as together they travel every road we take. Despair at what in our madness we are bringing down on our own heads, and hope in him who travels the road with us and for us. As we are held in God's unbreakable love connection, let us pray. Dear God, teach us, 
teach us, guide us, direct us, comfort us in all the ups and downs of life, and help us to always remember that we are held in your unbreakable love connection. In your name we pray, amen. What is the connection? The unbreakable love connection. Say it again. The unbreakable love connection. You got it. Our hymn is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. <laughs> Scripture tells us that if we are faithful to see those things where we fall short of what God has, has asked us to be and do, what Christ has died for us so that we can do, if we are faithful, sometimes just take some time out and see where we may have not quite made the mark. God is faithful to forgive us always because of that unbreakable love. Let us pray the prayer of confession is written in the bulletin. Loving Christ, patient friend of the impatient, save us from our restless selves. Grant us holy penance and in this passionate week ahead. <laughs> Allow us time to ponder our souls ask forgiveness to wait. Save us from the trivial which distract us from the depths of your passion. Forgive us. May the purple hues of Lent direct our gaze within. May all the lesser gods fade as we prepare for the darkness for the dawn. In your name we pray. Sometimes when we look back <laughs> on our lives and see the things that we've done or haven't done, we wonder if it's possible that God could forgive us. And yet Christ died for us. Christ saved us and gives us eternal life. Forgiveness is ours already. Thanks be to God. Amen. All that we have and all that we are are gifts from God. Let us re now receive our offering that we might share it with the world and others might come to know the good news of Jesus Christ.
God, receive now our offerings, but more than that, receive our lives that we might become what you have called us to be, followers of Christ here in this place and around the world. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. I see some smiling faces, and that's good. What are you, what are you really thankful for this morning? Yes, Becky. I am five foot three. Oh, yeah. And I had terrible back pain, and they had to the doctor, and then back pain is totally gone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good. Um, and it wasn't how it was called. Uh huh. She had no, no residuals, huh? That's good. That's good. She got pain. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Yes. Thank you. And Michelle and her crew do a good job, don't they? Yes. And that's been good. Judith? I'm thankful for the medication. I, w I wish sometimes I could be like Jesus and just put my hand on somebody. <laughs> but see, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but Doctors and nurses and, and technicians, everybody's working on cures for our, our diseases. And it's wonderful out there what they're doing. And stop and think how far that has come over the years. And thanks be to God for that. What else are you thankful for? Yes. My dad recovered very well. Great. Good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I'm thankful right now that it's not raining again. I mean, <laughs> I don't, the, the, the whole yard around our house is just sopping, and, and I think it socks it in my bones, too, as well. I'm thankful, too. But you've never left our, our prayers, okay? Just know that, all right? And that's good. What are you still concerned about? Good. I know you're concerned about something. Either that you don't listen to the news, you don't watch TV, and... <laughs> the wars, yeah, the wars. Mm -hmm. Wars, 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 wars. I'm concerned about children. Children sometimes are treated like chaff, I think, and blown away. It's amazing how many children each year in this country and around the world die for those who are supposed to be caring for them. And we're not talking about abortion. We're talking about children who have made it to the point where they can stand up and walk and get mistreated. So we need to pray for children and those who are supposed to be caring for children. And let us go to God now in prayer. Gracious God, you've heard our prayers. 
you also know the prayers of our heart, the prayers that sometimes are unspoken, but you know that these are our concerns, and we're glad that we, you are always connected to us through love. We thank you. We thank you for all the good things that are happening in this congregation and in places around the world as well. And help us to take a moment now and then to recognize the people and the events that are taking place in the world that are uplifting, that are helpful, that are bringing life to people and not death. And gracious, as we continue to serve the people here on 103rd Street, may we continue to find ways in which we might be the face of Christ, not only to the ones who come in here from the streets, but others who may pass by every day, may somehow be connected and know that we are here because Christ loves us and cares for us, and we care for them. Gracious God, we pray for the Presbyterian Church. There's been some troubles going on right now, and good Presbyterians don't always just love each other. They sometimes fight each other. And we ask that you be with the leaders of our church and help them to understand that it's not important who's in charge because we know who's in charge. Christ is in charge. And no people can take that place for him. We pray for this country and the divisions that are going on here, the divisions that are not important. When we stop and think how this country was built on the premise that all people are created equal and all people are created equal by their creator and they are to be treated that way and gracious God we pray for the nations of the world that somehow somehow we may realize that killing each other doesn't solve problems all it does is make more enemies so guide and direct us all so that we can begin to make peace first within our own hearts and then peace within our own families, in our church, in our communities, in the world. We pray all this in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Jesus, Thy Boundless Love for Me, number 30, 366 in the Blue Hymnal.
First, I charge you to remember and take to heart that we are held in relationship to God with an unbreakable love connection. And then to invite you to this week, walk with Jesus Christ through this week with, because he walks all the roads with us. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Give each and every one of us peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.